What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you look are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video, more specifically a Chelsea transfer news video. Now I know what you're thinking, Chelsea are in a transfer ban, but when it is lifted next summer, or maybe even January, but probably next summer, they are going to have a lot of money to spend. Finishing third in the Premier League, being in the Champions League this season, general just accumulated sales, the Eden Hazard sale money, the Alvaro Morata sale money, which people forget about, that's a lot of cash, and generally all the accumulated money from the loan army. So there's going to be a bunch of funds, but whether Frank Lampard will want to spend it on a whole new bunch of players or not is yet to be seen, but we're talking about free transfer targets today, certainly names that keep cropping up in the media, speculation, people around the clubs, newspapers, headlines, etc. These players are ex-Chelsea player Nathan Ake again, Leicester and England left back Ben Chilwell, and probably most excitingly Dortmund's young English superstar Jadon Sancho. So we're going to be going through these three players. I'll be offering my opinion on whether I think this would be a good move for Chelsea and if the players would want to come. So it's going to be a really interesting video but before we do get into today's video I want to request that you subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you do hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every single day. I want you guys to keep up with the content and if you want to help me out please do like this video. And a quick reminder to everyone I do live streams most evenings here in this channel on top of the video so swing by around 8 p.m. most evenings and hang out in the live stream and thank you to those of you who already come and hang out in the chat. All right let's start with the video and you know what let's start with young Nathan Aki. Now this one feels a bit banter because he keeps going away from the club and getting pulled back in for one reason or another. Obviously he went on loan to Bournemouth before and that's the club he currently resides at now and Chelsea called him back from his loan spell to act as cover. I think really against his will. He didn't play much at Chelsea under Conte then, even though he's a good player. And when he got the chance to move back to Bournemouth on a permanent, he jumped at it. Now, Nathan Aki is a very, very good player, arguably one of Bournemouth's best, and he's still very young and has a lot of experience. So that positive partnered with he experienced Chelsea as a younger lad, maybe with some of the coaches that are currently coaching Chelsea now, he might feel like he's given more of a chance, and he's a really good sort of utility player. Now I don't mean that in a bad way in like an Eric Dyer can slip into defence from midfield. I mean it as in he's a very very good defender but he can play in the full back role. He can play in a two centre back system, a three centre back system and he's a little bit of a leader. But the fact remains Chelsea do have four good centre backs and if they were going to invest in the centre back next summer when the ban is lifted you fancy they'd have to go all in on an absolute Galactico centre back for it to be a worthwhile investment getting yet another centre back in the club. Between Zuma, Tomori, Rudiger and Christensen, for me all of those are sort of a similar tier centre back to Nathan Aki and you'd probably argue someone like uh, Rudiger's probably better than Aki anyway so it would seem a really peculiar buy maybe it's something to do with a buyback clause that Chelsea can get him for a really reasonable fee but again this is something that probably would annoy young Nathan Aki being brought back and forth from this club where he just wants to be settled. Now I'm sure if Chelsea went to him look we want you back you're going to be our boy, you're definitely going to start every game, look at the new coaching staff, there's a really good feel good factor in West London at the moment, don't you fancy that? He might reflect and think, hmm, maybe I will go back, and to be honest, he probably wants to play for his national team now. Holland obviously have Matthias De Ligt and Virgil van Dijk, which is an incredibly hard partnership to break up, but for example, De Ligt's still younger than he is, he hasn't been great of late for both country and club at Juventus. If Aki's playing and starting for Chelsea at the highest level in the Premier League and is playing, say, in the top four, maybe he could partner Virgil van Dijk and actually muscle his way into that centre-back partnership um, because Virgil van Dijk and Ake will both play the similar type of football in the Premier League. So maybe that could happen and maybe if a certain picture is painted for Nathan Ake, he might fancy it. But for me... I don't think he probably would fancy it, I don't think he'd believe the lies that have been spun to him before, and I think for Chelsea, it's not a smart investment. Right, moving on to the next transfer target, Ben Chilwell. Now this is one that will not go away. Now, Ben Chilwell is a very, 
very good player. He's a very good age and he performs at a very high level, at the highest level in the Premier League. He's England's starting left back and he seems like he might be the perfect player profile to play under Frank Lampard and do well at Chelsea. All sounds great, right? Wrong. <laughs> in my opinion, this would be a really silly buy because to purchase Ben Chilwell, it would absolutely be a world record fee to buy a left back. He's at the top of his game, he's young and he's English, and it would be from Leicester to Chelsea. Now look what they did with Harry Maguire. You think they're gonna play, you know, cheap ball with Chelsea for Ben Chilwell? Not gonna happen. So a world record fee for a left back. Sure, he's very good, but the fact remains, Chelsea, that's not their weakest position. Emerson is Chelsea's best performing player this season at left back and you know what he's the best performing left back slash defender statistically in the Premier League so far this season. Now I'm not saying Emerson's a better left back than Ben Chilwell maybe he could be or maybe he could be the same level but what I'm saying is it would be a silly investment for Chelsea Football Club to take 70 million out of this treasure chest or war chest they've got and put it on a left back. If it happens, you could say, well, Chelsea have two really, really excellent left backs fighting for the same spot, fine. But really, in reality, they should be looking to bring a player back like Juan Castillo, someone to deputize behind Emerson and then sort of develop underneath him and then maybe eventually challenge without you know, wasting 70 million pounds. Chelsea also obviously still have Marcus Alonso, but I think it does look like he's out of favor to play in the conventional left back position. So maybe someone does need to be brought in, but for my money, it should be a youth product. Or if they do purchase someone, it should be someone with promise from the continent that can develop underneath Emerson. Of course, Ben Chilwell is a superb footballer and he would strengthen the squad because it's just another excellent footballer there. But in terms of how Emerson's been performing, that would be really unfair to him and it probably would be a little bit of a waste of money. Ben Chilwell might fancy coming to Chelsea because Leicester to Chelsea does seem like a bit of a step up. At the moment, Leicester look like a better, more settled team than Chelsea, purely because of where they are in their project in isolation. Um, you know, they might actually fancy to finish above Chelsea this season, but still, it's West London, it's, you know, the the best club in London, it's the culture, it's the club, it's the coaches there. He might fancy it, but still, for me, it's a silly buy. All right, which leaves us to the main event, Jaden Sancho. Now, this one does sound a bit fanciful, blockbuster, and maybe just some headlines, but there's a few things to consider here. Sancho was a trailblazer in going to the Bundesliga, and he's enjoyed an excellent spell over there. He's the youngest player in the Bundesliga to score 15 goals, which is a bit of an arbitrary number, but still, he's been really, really impressive. He's just signed a new contract at Dortmund, and they very much using him as the poster boy. Now, if you listen to a lot of football journalists, the way they talk about him, there's a general understanding that he probably will go next summer, and maybe this new contract was just to protect the investment of Dortmund, have a good season with them, and then make them an absolute killing in terms of the profit they get on him. So it does seem like he'd want to come back to the Premier League. Now, obviously he's been heavily linked with Manchester United, and Chelsea. He's obviously come from Manchester City originally and you can't really see him returning to that club. So the interesting thing is here, he is a self-proclaimed Chelsea fan or certainly said he was growing up. Now I don't know how much that actually counts for these days in football. You know, sometimes people say they want to play for a club and they end up going to their rivals, Nicola Pepe. But there's a few other things. Like I said, there is the positive plus of the lifestyle culture living in London. If you want to play in the Premier League, you generally want to go to London. And another thing is one of his best mates, Callum Hudson-Odoi, is at Chelsea and possibly should be signing another contract. So there's that sort of romantic view of Hudson-Odoi on one wing, Jadon Sancho on the other wing, both playing in West London, both in the England squad. Lovely scenes, really. So, he might fancy it. Now, I think he's on loads and loads of money at the moment on his new contract. I think probably about 200k a week, um, which is probably about right for his talent. But, you know, if hudson Odoi is being offered 100k a week and he comes to Chelsea, that might cause some problems. But still, it's a lot of money 
and importantly he will cost loads of money he will cost north of 120 million now is that a waste of money for chelsea football club well let's think about it right chelsea have hudson adore and christian pulisic two really young bright talents that can both play as first choice wingers each top tier club really needs four wingers that could be starting and when you've got players like Pulisic, you can play in the number 10, you can rotate either side. And if both Willian and Pedro leave the club in the summer, you could have Hudson Adoy, Pulisic, um, Mount looks like he's very good moving out on the left hand side, and Jaden Sancho. And that would complete a set of four very young, very talented, wide sort of number 10 forwards if you include Pulisic and Mount as sort of number 10s. So maybe that would be the smart way to invest the Eden Hazard money. He certainly brings goals and assists. He'd be playing with some of his other young English comrades in Loftus-Cheek, hudson Adoy, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham maybe at that point as well. And there would still absolutely be a place for the versatile Christian Pulisic in this side. So Jaden Sancho might fancy it because it's a big club in the Premier League. He could hopefully get the money he wants. He could play of his mates and allegedly he is a Chelsea fan. Maybe it would make sense for Chelsea to be their sort of Galactico level signing um, after they've accumulated loads of funds over the transfer ban and potentially he could replace Eden Hazard's goals and assists. Well certainly a bunch of them and then you know the rest of the kids coming through could all share the burden together. So it would be a really interesting one. Out of those three it would probably make the most sense in terms of you know, a marketing boost for the club in terms of an actual offensive output on the pitch. But would Frank Lampard want him? What if both Pulisic and hudson Adoy really do perform this season well on the wings? How would they feel if Chelsea splashed loads and loads of money out on this guy and brought him in who obviously would have to start? It's a really... I don't know, it's an interesting one. But what do you guys think? What do you think about these targets? Do you think Chelsea should just wait till the end of the summer, assess how everyone's done, and then have a look at the squad and open the war chest? What do you guys think? I want to hear it. Get down in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this content today, please do like this video, guys. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new. You're all welcome to follow me on social media as well, at Football Yannick, on both Instagram and Twitter, at Football Yannick. And other than that, I think I'm done, guys. So you enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby